now This MMA what we talking about Yeah, you tuned into the pod now Gonna be hard for you to stop now Yeah, we caged in Yeah, we caged in. Welcome back to another episode of Caged In. I'm your host, Chris DiCarlo. Got a very special guest making his debut on the show. It's Brady Bam Bam. Hi, Stan. How we doing, my man? It's going good. Yeah. Living the dream. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I know it's fight week for you. You got a big fight coming up on Saturday. So, you know, I appreciate you taking a little bit of time to come out and talk to me, man. It's probably going to be a busy week for you. So I'm, I'm glad you could squeeze a little time in for me. Yeah, I love chopping it up. So uh, I just got to focus on this weight cut. So, you know, talking fights is what I love to do. So happy to be here. There you go, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's get into your background a little bit, man. Can you just talk about where you were born and raised and what was growing up kind of like for you? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Spokane, Washington. Um, still here. That's where I train most of the time. You know, I'll travel to Vegas and train. But, you know, my roots are in Spokane, Washington. Grew up in the Valley. But, uh, yeah, you know, I love it here. You know, had a had a good childhood, you know, I'm, uh, you know, it's the, everyone has their sob stories, everyone has their up and downs, but you know, I'm blessed for where I came from, the people I have in my life, but yeah. For sure, man. When you were growing up, were you an athlete? Did you play like all the sports and whatnot? No, actually I wasn't an athlete at all. Um, I did karate when I was little, you know, uh, just for fun. Um, got out of that when I was probably eight and then I didn't really do any sports. I was actually a chubby kid. It's funny because oh, yeah. I was like, I look back on pictures and I was a, a chubby short kid with an afro and uh, glasses because I've had glasses since I was in the second grade. Mm -hmm. um, had, I got, con you know, laser surgery uh, when I turned pro. But yeah, so it's it's funny going from that. And then I started jujitsu when I was 14 and they completely changed my life. There you go. And how did that kind of leak into MMA? You know, how did you get started in the sport? What's the journey there? And like that first time you kind of stepped in the gym and realized, OK, this is what I want to do. Yeah, you know, growing up as a, you know, the chubby kid with afro and glasses, I was kind of getting picked on a lot, and I wasn't the biggest dude, you know, I was a pretty small kid, um, and I just, like, got picked on a lot, and so I, I wanted to I wanted to do something for myself, and I wanted to gain some confidence, and it's funny, because my mom actually was taking private lessons boxing, mm -hmm. and I started with her, and so my mom actually got me into boxing, nice. and then, you know, that, the same gym had jiu-jitsu, so then I started doing jiu-jitsu, and, uh, you know, my dad was a huge supporter of that, and uh, we would start jiu-jitsu. I started doing tournaments. Uh, you know, I won Worlds at Blue Belt eventually. I just became obsessed, you know, not having a lot of friends, you know, and finding that, you know, camaraderie in the gym, it just, it changed my life. And, you know, my home life wasn't the best, so I, I loved uh, I loved being at the gym. For sure, man. That's awesome to hear. Um, you do train over at Sick Jitsu now, currently in Spokane. Um, what, what was your introduction into that gym? And, you know, how did you ultimately become a part of that fight team? Yeah, so I uh, I started with, like I said, Jiu-Jitsu school. I was just doing Jiu-Jitsu for a while. And I even started fighting MMA, like my first MMA fight, I was 16. Um, and so I was kind of just the Jiu-Jitsu guy going out there fighting. And I was always scrappy, so I'd throw hands and then mm -hmm. choke him out um but when I was 18 um I uh you know I had a falling out with my jiu-jitsu coach and I had been fighting on Rick's show Rick's the head coach of Sick Jitsu mm -hmm. um and he had a promotion that I was fighting on so I'd always like kind of cross-trained and knew him and so it was the only it was the right thing to do because I knew um if I wanted to go make it big and make a career out of this I had to go to the best gym in Spokane which was Sick Jitsu you know I knew about Mike Chiesa and Julian Pena from that gym so it's a no-brainer for me Definitely, man. And for sure, for sure. And how important has guys like Rick Little, uh, Michael Chiesa, you mentioned Juliana Pena, how important have those people in that gym been to you and your growth and improvement in the sport of MMA? Yeah, dude, I owe, I owe them everything, you know. Um, you know, MMA is such a, you know, a individual sport. You know, you got to you gotta put in the time. No one can do it for you. You got to invest, uh, you know, your effort. You got to work on the nutrition, all that stuff. But without a good team behind you, you're nothing. And so I had, I have the best team in the world. I got Rick Little, who has an eye for MMA. Um, you know, I got a mentor like Mike Kies and Julian Pena that uh, before I got on Tough, they would won their season of Tough. And so get, going through that with them was huge. Um, you know, they gave me some good advice, especially me being the youngest and less, least experienced. I could take anything I could get. Um, but even now in my career, like Mike Kies is going to come and corner me for my fight. Nice. You know, I train with him every day. Um, yeah, I'm I'm blessed for sure. Yeah. 
for sure, man. You definitely got a good group of people around you. And, you know, the gym that you fight out of is definitely highly touted and respected in, in the game. So uh, big ups to you and everything that you guys accomplished over there. It's, it's awesome to watch as a fan, for sure. And you did mention, you know, the Ultimate Fighter. You mentioned that Juliana and Mike had both won their respective seasons. Um, so when you were going into the Ultimate Fighter 29, what was some of the advice that they kind of gave to you uh, before you made your your run on the tournament there? Yeah, so a few things. Um, like one of the biggest things that uh, Mike told me is like you can't look at it as the whole tournament. You got to look at the fight. The next fight is the only fight you got to worry about. It's the fight that's in front of you is the most important fight. So obviously if you lose, you're out of the tournament. So, I, you know, I took that mindset and it's like every fight was my last fight. And I don't know if you saw, but if you watch my fights, I fought like I wasn't, I didn't never had to fight again. Um, my first fight was a banger and I just went out there ready to die in the cage. And so I used that. Another thing is just, you know, keeping your mental focus. You know, I journaled a lot when I was in the house, you know, I wasn't like, I didn't let my mind get away from me. I was like, you know, working on uh, keeping my focus. You know, I was there for only a month and a half, which is a long time when you're in there, but I had to make it happen while I was there. And uh, it helps because we're like, you know, we have such good guys that came out of our gym and we're respected, but we're such a small, tight-knit group. Like, even now, I think there's, like, during practice, there's four pros on the mat, and then there's, like, 10, 15 people at most. Right. And that's a, as big as our gym gets. And so I think just having that, like, tight-knit crew is is huge. For sure, man. It's definitely important. You guys definitely, like I said earlier, you guys definitely have a great group over there. Um, you mentioned your first fight. Uh, you fought against Josh Rittenhouse uh, on the Ultimate Fighter 29, somebody that you've kind of known from the from the local scene and over there in Washington. Um, so can you just talk about like how you knew Josh before the show and what was it kind of like getting in there and fighting against him for the first fight? Yeah, dude, it's it was pretty crazy because, like you said, I knew him. I actually have a picture of us training together when I was 16 because mm -hmm. um, he literally trains at a gym that's probably like a 15 minute drive from my gym yeah that's great and so yeah so we're like we're from the same town he's 10 years older than me and so when i was coming up he was like he was the man he fought in world series of fighting which is now pfl and he had a five round decision with marlon marias mm -hmm. you know he lost but it was a good fight um so growing up like he was the he was the man of my weight class and so when we were in the house you know we trained a few times um, we're like, hey, let's be roommates, even though we're not on the same team. And it just so happens that they draw us and our coaches pick us to fight first. And we're like, what the hell? But going into that, I was extremely nervous. I was like, damn, I'm fighting. It was like, he might have not been the most well known on the show. But in my eyes, he was like, he was a legend, you know, out of Spokane. And so looking up to him and being able to fight him and then being able to beat him was you know, that was the biggest feather in my cap so far. And I just like got so much confidence from that win. Yeah, for sure. You know, you, you go on to win that one and you know, the next fight you win by knockout and you ultimately end up falling short in the finale to Ricky Tercios by a close split decision. Uh, amazing fight. Uh, as far as ultimate fighter finales go, definitely one of the more entertaining finale fights we've seen. Um, but they say that you learn more from your losses than you do your wins. So what is something that you took from that fight and a lesson that you've learned um, specifically from the ultimate fighter finale? Yeah, I guess what the biggest thing from that, you know, the Ultimate Fighter finale is just not let it go to decision. I got to go out there, finish these fights, and dominate it while I'm finishing it. Um, I feel like I won that fight. You know, I would love to run it back with Ricky at some point in my career. Um, but like I said, you can't let the judges decide. You know, that's the biggest thing in MMA right now is people know that judges are just, like, unreliable. But it's also my my fault for letting it be that close. So next fight... You know, from fights on, I'm just going to I'm going to pull away and I'm going to finish these guys. For sure, man. One hundred percent. You know, we did see a little bit of like the judging thing. It even carried over to this weekend's UFC car. We saw a couple of suspect cards. It happens in every car where you see, you know, things go that way. And it's been a big problem and a big topic of conversation uh, the last couple of years as far as, you know, the judging goes as well. So definitely, obviously, you everybody would like to go in there and get a finish. But, you know, sometimes that's not the case. Um, so hopefully we can get that that cleaned up in the future. And so we can prevent these types of things moving forward. Um, after the Ultimate Fighter finale, man, uh, you did take a little bit of time off. I know you had a knee injury that you had to get surgery on and rehab and all that stuff. Um, can you kind of talk about that time period for you and how it was like finally getting back into the gym, finally getting back into the rhythm of doing all those things after you got your knee cleaned up? Yeah, because uh, li uh, not everyone maybe knows this, but like w when I was on the Ultimate Fighter, I tore my ACL completely. And so I had a complete ACL tear, a meniscus tear, and an MCL tear. And so I fought all three of my fights without an ACL. And so after, you know, I, I never got it checked out or anything. I was just, like, determined to make it to the finale. 
got to the finale and I'm like, I'll deal with it after, you know, it'd slip in practice and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, blow up my, my coach would be like, he's like, we would have to wrap it every practice. It was just, it was hell, but it was worth it to go get that contract. Um, but yeah, so after this, the fight, I had to go get knee surgery. It was a nine month recovery. The long, I never had got injured before that. So it was such a weird experience. You know, I had to sit out for three months. I couldn't even walk on it for the first two. It was, it was, it was a pretty crazy surgery, but, uh, you know, it gave me a lot of time to reflect. I got like a little, uh, some opportunities to, you know, achieve another goal. I bought a house. Nice. Man. Um, Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. So I've been saving since I was 18. So I finally was able to, you know, get my ducks in a row, buy a house. I got a bunch of roommates. We all rented out. We all train and stuff like that. Cool. Um, so making some leeway in other parts of my life. But as soon as I could get back, I was, I was ready to go. And even the, I was out for 13 months and I thought that was even too long. I was ready to get back to it at nine, but the doctor's like, no, chill, let her recover, let it heal. It takes almost two years to be a hundred percent, um, which I'm almost two now. And, and I feel it. It's like, I feel like my knees almost a hundred percent back and you know, I it did great in the Fernie fight and I think it's going to be even better in this fight. Awesome, man. I'm glad you're healthy. Uh, you know, you were fresh in our minds after the Ultimate Fighter finale. You know, you were such a young kid. Uh, we all had high hopes for you moving forward. And then, you know, you did take that little bit of break off and then getting back in there versus Fernie, man. I think you just kind of put yourself right back on the forefront of everybody's minds. And, you know, we're just as excited to see you fight now as we were coming off that uh, Ultimate Fighter finale. Um, so, you know, going into that fight versus Fernie, man, and having such that a long layoff, as you said, did that kind of play into, you know, the early parts of round one? Did you feel any ring rust, any cobwebs that you had to shake out? Yeah, I tell everybody when we talk about that fight, it's, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. For sure. But, but yeah, dude, definitely. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I can't really pinpoint what it was, but, you know, I got, I had, I was super excited to get back out there. And in the fight, I was a little bit nervous and I lost all my nerves, which for me, I've learned I got to be, you know, I got to be cautious when I'm fighting. You know, I got to make sure that I'm respecting the other guy because I walked out there and I'm like, I'm going to fuck Fernie up. And I just was like, I'm going to go out there and knock him out. And I went for the big old overhand punch, left my chin in the air and got caught. So it was a, it was a learning experience. You know, luckily I got a good chin. Uh, We trained that. And so it's like I recovered and dominated the rest of the fight. But yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit of nerves, a little bit of excitement, you know, I was I was ready to get back in there and get a finish, but uh, yeah, good on Fernie. He got that good uh, good counter left hook straight right that sat me down in the first part of the round. Yeah, he did catch you pretty good, man. How badly were you hurt ultimately, and then how were you able to rally and come back and you know take rounds two and three and secure that unanimous decision victory? You know, I, I, if someone's gonna finish me, they they're gonna have to kill me. So they're gonna have to put the lights out, whether it's choking or knocking me out. I'm not gonna quit. Um. I was a little bit hurt. You know, it, it was just a flash. It was a flash, and then I came right back, too. If you watched the fight, I didn't even actually fully hit the ground. My legs just kind of buckled, and I came back, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just a quick, like almost like a flash of light, and I was back in it. And luckily, I, I my wrestling kicked in, grabbed that single leg, and, and we were right to where I wanted to be. For sure, man. Like I, like I said, it was awesome to see you back in there. Uh, we are about to see you back in there again. UFC Vegas 71 this Saturday. Uh, you're taking on Bakarel Dana, who is 12 and 4 as a professional. Let's talk about this one a little bit. Uh, what do you know about your opponent's game, and how do you feel about this fight stylistically for you? You know, I think it's a very similar fight to the Fernie fight in the fact that they're really good counter strikers and they're, you know, they like to just stay on the feet. Um, I don't know much about his grappling. I know it's not as good as mine. Um, so I think his game plan is going to be, you know, sprawl and brawl and try to knock me out because he has three knockouts in the UFC. Um, but you know, everyone says that until they get in the cage. Um, it's, I'm excited for this fight because it's, it's another guy that's 10 years older than me. He has twice the record I do. Mm -hmm. Um, he has a good name in the UFC, so it's going to be another feather in my cap after I beat him. Um, and I'm looking for the finish. Maybe I, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating second round finish. There you go. Um, you mentioned he does have three first round knockouts in the UFC, you know, eight knockouts total in his career. Is that something that you guys have put a little bit of emphasis on in camp, you know, preparing for that stand up and preparing for that power? Yeah, that's one thing that's a little bit different from him and Fernie is I think he has the he's a little bit more finishing power than Fernie, um, a little less dynamic, but more finishing power. So, yeah, we definitely have, you know, addressed that in camp, but um, I got to address that with anybody in the UFC because anyone can put your lights out at any moment. So 
Um, yeah, but we definitely prepared well for this guy. We like the matchup. Um, I like what it will do for me once I beat him. For sure, man. Very excited to see you get back in there. Um, you know, you are opening up. You are the first fight on this card, right? You are opening up at yeah. the, the start of the show. Yeah. Yes, sir. 1 p.m. on ESPN Plus and ESPN 2. Yes, sir. You know, we'll be tuned in. Uh, what is What do you think has been the biggest improvement, you know, from the Brady we saw in November to the Brady that we're going to see on Saturday? Um, I think the biggest, the biggest improvement that you're going to see is, you know, I, my striking just keeps getting better and better at every camp. You know, I, uh, like I said, I started out with jujitsu. So I feel like my jujitsu is always going to be top tier and that gets better as well. I mean, I'm always training that, but I think my, uh, my powers coming in stronger, I'm more dynamic on the feet. I think you're just going to see a more evolved stand up game for me. And then my, uh, my wrestling is always there. My grappling is always dangerous. So, okay. Uh, you did mention a little bit of prediction earlier. Can you are you a prediction guy typically? Uh, do you have a prediction for how you see this fight finishing for you? No, I don't. You know, I I run through scenarios in my head. You know, I'm I'm obsessed with this game, so I just imagine all different kinds of scenarios. So anything that comes my way, I don't want to force anything, but I just know that you know I, I just have a, a like a incentive that I, I'm going to finish him in the second. But I'm not sure how it's going to come, whether it be submission or TKO. Either way. I'm down with it. For sure, man. I love to hear it. Uh, before I get you out of here, man, I usually like to finish up these interviews with some random, you know, fun questions. So we can do a couple of those and I'll let you go and uh, get on your way, man. Let's go. I'm All down right. with it. Uh, your nickname, man, you go by Bam Bam. What's the story behind the nickname? You know, like I, I was the youngest guy in the gym, you know, in the jiu-jitsu gym, but I was always super aggressive. Like, I think my second jiu-jitsu tournament, I ran three guys off the mat with a blast double into the judges table. And so, like, I've always just been super aggressive, kind of like, you know, Bam Bam and Pebbles from the Flintstones. Of course. Walking around that big stick, beating up all these dinosaurs. Um, so that's where I got that from. Um, but, yeah, so one of the girls in my gym would always be like, you're like Bam Bam. <laughs> really? That's how, that's how the nickname came, man. That's, that's a good story. I love to hear it. Um, you're also, I saw you're also a volunteer firefighter um, over there. And are you in, like, the Spokane, Washington area? That's how, that's where you volunteer? Yeah. All right, so what's the uh, how'd you get started doing that, and uh, how long you been doing that for? You know, it's actually funny. Before I got an Ultimate Fighter and bought my own house, I was a resident firefighter, and so I was living at the fire station. It was a way uh, for me to you know save money, um, because I could live there for free. I could work on the weekends, and I could still train full time. And so I was doing that, saving up money, you know, training full time, waiting for my opportunity to get into the UFC. Um, I got into it because my mom's a nurse practitioner in the ER and then her husband is a volunteer or he was a career firefighter and just retired. And so, you know, the medical side has always been in my, in my life and I, I know it really well. So it was just kind of a natural order of things. If I wasn't fighting, I'd probably be being a firefighter, honestly. There you go, man. I mean, that's a job that, you know, kids usually like have as like their dream job when they're a little kids. So the fact that you get to do that and fight at the same time, you know, it's you're living out a lot of people's dreams, man. It's pretty cool to hear. Oh yeah. I'm completely blessed. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, you know, you did mention that you're born and raised in Spokane, still in Spokane to this day. So if someone was going to go visit Spokane, what are some of the spots that you would recommend they check out while they're there? So a few things, if you're coming to Spokane, you got to get out in nature because we got some of the best hiking. If you come during the winter, we have the best skiing. We got mountains all over the place. We got lakes. So if you're going to come to Spokane, get out in nature, enjoy it. Uh, we got mountains everywhere. So that's number one. If you're going to be downtown, um, you got to go to Dick's Barbecue. It's our most famous uh, burger place. Nice. Got killer burgers. I'm going there right after this fight. <laughs> Hell yeah. They get fat and happy. Um, and then what else? Um, yeah, just go downtown. There's a, there's a big event center called the Pavilion. Nice. It's cool to see. They do a lot of concerts down there. Awesome, man. I love to hear it. Well, Brady, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on the show, chopping up with me a little bit. It is fight week. You're getting in there on Saturday. Um, can't wait to see you fight, man. Go get that W, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon, man. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, brother. Have a good Thanks, one. Sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, down for the count, and he can't even talk now. This MMA, what we talking about? Yeah, you tuned into the pod now. Gonna be hard for you to stop now. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in.